Hello and welcome to the practice of harmony. In this video, we are going to expand on the fourth degree. The fourth degree is a very interesting one as we have different colors that we can add to it. This will give us different options when harmonizing and composing. In the previous exercise, we started on scale degree one, which in this case is C, and we move up to the fourth degree of the scale which in this case is F. And from here, we use the perfect chord formula to build a chord. The formula is one, three, five, eight. And of course, we did it in different positions. Now, we're going to change one note only. Instead of one, three, five, eight, we are going to do one, three, five, six. From now onwards, I will call this the six, five chord because it has a six and it has a five. You could call it the five, six chord or you could call it the three, five, six, but I call it the six, five. This is because the third is implied. Every chord that we are studying at the moment has a third. So I just call it the six, five chord. So let's analyze what each voice is doing when moving from chord one to chord four. So starting in first position, when moving up to the fourth degree, the soprano was keeping the common tone. The alto was moving to the third. As mentioned, every chord needs a third. Now the tenor, which now is doing the third, moves to the eighth. So if we isolate those two voices, we can see how this sound is redundant. So we are going to try a different option. Instead of going up to the eight, we move down to the six. So let's do all the voices together. And from here, we move to chord five with a four three suspension and resolve. So as you can see, the movement is almost the same. There's only one note difference. If you explore the classical repertoire, you will find that almost every time that the bass ascends from the fourth degree to the fifth degree, the composers add a sixth to the fourth degree in any of the voices, which then becomes the fifth of the fifth and resolves. So let's try the six five in different positions. I'm going to start in second position this time. So the first step is to find the voice that is singing the third. In this case, it's the soprano. And remember, instead of moving up to the eight, we are going to move down to the six. Now to clarify, when I say the six, I mean the six from the bass. If you count from F, one, two, three, four, five, six, D is the six. And then we go to the four, three over five, as you know, and resolve. So one more time in second position. I will play it here so you can see. 
Now the 4-3. And resolve. Now let's try it in third position. Which is the voice singing the third? Is the alto. So the alto is going to move down to the six. It's a very nice position. You can see the six five there. Four, three, and resolve. One more time. very idiomatic in classical music. Now let's see what happened in a minor key. What will happen is the same. Look for the voice singing the third. In this case, it's the tenor. It will move down to the six. Of the bass, right? That's a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And from here, we do the four, Three, and resolve. One more time. Previously, we were doing an octave. The note singing the third, which is the tenor, was moving up to D. So both voices are doing the same. Now we exchange D for B. There you have the six. You can see it. And from here, we go to the dominant with the four three suspension and resolve. Let's try it in second position. Which is the voice doing the third? The soprano. Soprano moves down to the six from the bass, which is a B. Now we go to the fifth degree. We do the four three and resolve. Finally, let's try in third position. Where is the voice doing the third? Alto, in this case. Moves down to the six. And we do the cadence. Now, in a minor key, notice the dramatic effect that this has in the music. Of course, this is subjective. This is just my perception of it. In a major key, if you find it difficult to distinguish the sound from a perfect chord, with the 6-5. Just keep on repeating those two chords and pay attention to the 6. Do it in different positions. Now with the six. Playing the drills will not only put the 6-5 chord in your fingers, but also in your ears. So by doing this exercise, you are training your ears and your fingers, of course. Now, in modern music, you will see this notated as an F6. Very common in jazz charts. They replace a major 7 chord with an F6, especially at the end of the tune. In modern Roman numerals, you will see it written as 2, 6, 5. 
This will be explained in future episodes. It is not necessary to add extra theory at this stage. So the exercise for this video is to play the 1, 4, 5, 1 progression, but adding the 6-5 chord over the 4th degree and the 4-3 suspension over 5. This is very important in classical music, so make sure to do it in all keys and in all positions. So at this stage, I will recommend you to pause the video and try it. Otherwise, here we go. Starting in C in first position.
starting in C in second position. Starting in C in third position. <laughs> 